Greetings, brother. Tonight, as we open our meeting up, I want to draw your attention to something we that happens at the assembly. Something that happens while we meet together is we learn. That's one of the purposes of meeting together. I mean, we're at home, you know, we, we read the scriptures frequently amongst ourselves, and we familiarize ourselves with the text of scripture. But there comes a point when we need to be able to learn what is meant by what is said, and that's something that the, the assembly is a place where we can come and learn what is meant by what we read. And I'll just show, just kind of show you what kind of sparked this thought here. It's something Jesus said to the Pharisees. And it's in Matthew chapter 9, verse 12 and 13. This is where it says that when Jesus sat, to, sat down to eat, that many publicans and sinners came to sit down with him, to eat with him. And the Pharisees, being offended by this, they asked his disciples why he ate with publicans and sinners. What? Why do you do this? It doesn't say that the disciples responded, but that Jesus responded. Starting in verse 12 of chapter 9 of Matthew. But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, They that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repent. So that's the thing I'm going to ask it there. Go and learn what that meaneth. While reproving them, he instructs them to learn something that was meant in the scripture. And the passage I believe he referred to was Hosea 6.6, 6, I desired mercy and not sacrifice. A passage that the Pharisees, being well acquainted with the scriptures, ought to have understood. And in the passage quoted, mercy is put over sacrifice, and Christ was actually showing mercy to these people that came and sat and ate with him. He was actually showing the Pharisees how absurd they were. They did all that the law said but they failed to show mercy. They knew the scriptures, but they didn't understand the scriptures. Otherwise, they would have been able to see that Jesus was right in what he was doing. And what's the, th what's the thing we can gather here? All the things that we can overlook as a result of not understanding what we read. That's a result of that. If you don't understand, you too will overlook things. This reminds us that it's not enough to merely just know the text of scripture, and that is necessary. You have to know it. But we have to understand what these things we read about mean. And I feel too many are too content with just not knowing the meaning of Scripture. They're not motivated. And the divided church of our time has actually contributed to this kind of spirit. They've actually produced this, aware, this kind of idea that the Scripture can't be understood because of all the division there is about it. But the ignorance and division among men ought not to discourage us from seeking understanding from the Lord. When Jesus speaks to his people, what he says needs to be understood by them. So when reading scripture, on occasion you're going to come across things that require some thought. You're not really going to catch it right away. So I, I exhort you to take the incentive and go and learn what that means. Kind of like take that same thing that you read in Matthew. Just apply it to yourself when you come across something that's not unclear. Go and learn. See to it you understand it. Don't be content with just a vague awareness, just having a general understanding. Go and see and if you seek that understanding, the Lord, he can open your eyes to it. Now, Jesus spoke in parables, said it wasn't given to these multitudes to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but it was given to his disciples. Luke chapter 8, verse 9 actually says that they came to him and says, what's the meaning of this parable? And then that's when he says, he's like, it's given to you to know this. And he tells them the meaning of the parable of the sower. This should teach us that it matters where we go to learn. Because, I mean, I'm working off that foundation there. Go and learn, but where do, where do you go? Primarily, you have to go where Jesus is at work. That's a place you got to go. You have to go to the Son to receive understanding. And indeed, the assembly is a place where you can go and learn. And why is that? One of the main reasons is Jesus is with us in the assembly. He said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them. And that, of course, does not mean that Jesus is just present, like he's sitting in one of the chairs listening and singing with us. It's not limited to that at all. Rather, it's showing that he's working among those who meet in his name. He's the head of the body, isn't he? So he's doing. There's, he, there's, he's, he's making some. Act, there's some activity there where he's, where he's dwelling. With this being the case, I think it's more than reasonable to conclude that Jesus is in the midst of us. We're going to learn something from what he said. We're going to learn something from the scriptures. Also, remember, God has placed spiritual leaders in the assembly. Just some texts that come to mind: First Corinthians 12, 28; Ephesians 4. 11 and 12, speaking about teachers, prophets, apostles that God has placed in the church for edifying the body. These people who have received insight from the Lord 
and they can surely provide understanding to us. So when we meet here, remember why we are here. It's not just to socialize. I know you all know this, but this isn't the case. We're here to edify. We're here to be strengthened. And one of the other things we're here to do is we're here to learn what the scriptures mean. So with that, I exhort you to keep a sober mind when meeting here, to keep your, to not let your mind wander, don't let things distract you, so that you can hear the things, take in these things, retain, and you'll be able to understand Scripture better as a result of meeting together and discussing these things and hearing these things spoken and expounded on. Because mm-hmm. so, this is what the assembly is. It's an environment where learning can occur. We'll now open with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly 